Thanks. And welcome to the SharePoint Framework, a JavaScript special interest group bi-weekly sync. It is April 11th, 2019. Welcome to all of you. Apologies for starting a few minutes late. Uh, had some difficulties on my end getting in. I am going to take over as presenter so that when I click the buttons, it uh, will actually move the slides for everybody. There we go. Um, so we should be on slide two. Our agenda for today, uh, engineering update on SharePoint Framework. From uh, that'll be from VESA, and then we've got the patterns and practices program updates for the client, the PNPJS client library, the CLI, the SPFX reusable controls, and as well the PNP Yeoman generator. And then after that, we've got three awesome demos from Hugo, Joel, and this is going to go back into Patrick's list of names. He says horribly, and I apologize, a jazz. I uh, hope I'm close there, but uh, very cool, three very cool uh, demos. They're actually all React based today, so a bit of a theme there. Um, I'm very excited to see those three things demoed. Some really cool capabilities uh, that I think uh, everybody's going to enjoy seeing. And just a reminder, um, which highlighted again by our difficulties this morning, we are uh, very much excited about moving to Microsoft Teams just as soon as we can. And the difficulty is in the way we allow people that are not part of our organization uh, to present and some various other things. And, uh, you know, we really need that control on calls this size. And so we're waiting for that feature to be implemented. And it's been promised uh, that it's coming. But we will uh, move just as soon as we can. Um, this is not uh, certainly us being stubborn to stay on Skype. Uh, much the opposite, but us just waiting for teams uh, to get back uh, a couple of the capabilities we need to run these types of calls. Uh, folks looking to uh, participate in the patterns and practices, uh, specifically stuff around the client-side development side of things, uh, the first two boxes there are about demos. We always uh, love and appreciate the demos we get from the community. I've said it many, many times, but I mean, I always learn something, and I think it's always neat to see uh, what folks out there in the community are doing, because um, obviously uh, a lot of us aren't uh, working with customers every day in the way we used to. So it's neat to see what folks are out there doing, and it really does help drive and inform uh, what we try and build and deliver inside of PNP. So demos across anything SPFX, anything at PNP. So the uh, PNP.js, CLI, reusable controls, the Yoma generator, uh, use that any and all of that in any and all of the SPFX uh, capabilities, and we'd love to see that demo uh, on this call. As well, you can always contribute on GitHub to any of our projects. You can contribute by reporting issues, by submitting pull requests for uh, if you have fixed a bug or you're enhancing something, adding some new capabilities. Everybody uh, uh, loves to see that, so always appreciate uh, those folks. And then as well, uh, if you see folks with issues or questions uh, that maybe you've encountered before, it's always helpful uh, if you can drop in an answer. Uh, sometimes that will get folks an answer a little bit faster uh, than those of us on the core team can get to it. And then finally as well, uh, we always do uh, appreciate feedback from everybody. How are these calls going? Um, how can we improve the documentation? Where else can we help? Where else can we uh, expand PNP to support people? Um, and as well, positive feedback is always okay as well. I know when you're developing and heads down, it's it's uh, easy to get a little bit upset. Uh, we've all been there, I certainly have, but uh, you know, it's good uh, to let people know when stuff's uh, working well for you as well. So, a quick update from VESA on SharePoint Framework. Take it away, VESA. Uh, a few sites, nothing really dramatically new, but a few updates which we haven't actually opened too widely talked about. Uh, so, first of all, uh, the, the recap of the assets, so SPDev docs, SPDev videos, and SPDev issues. So uh, please use these uh, URLs um, to get access on the existing guidance, videos, and also the issue list. Now, few news. Uh, this just went out in social media like uh, 30 minutes ago or something like that. Well, or one hour ago. So we have an updated uh, SharePoint Framework developer training packets now available, which included three new additional modules. And these three mod modules are using React and Office UI Fabric React components uh, in your web parts and uh, extensions, deployment of SharePoint Framework components to production, so the considerations on there on how to do that and how to do that in an optimized way, and then uh, build the Microsoft Teams customizations using SharePoint Framework as a platform. And that's uh, now a 
the crowing theme uh, around uh, the SharePoint framework as well. So, the, so um, using SharePoint framework, you can build a one component which actually works as a web part or as a Microsoft Teams tab. So you have a one code base uh, which you have to maintain. AKMS SPFX uh, training is the address, and that will redirect you to the right location where you can get access on all of these assets. What's really important around these assets is that this is not only for self-learning. We do provide also presentations, demo material, hands-on labs, and all of that. So if you're looking into re-delivering this to your team, to external additional people, or whatever people, you can easily access this material. Or if you promise to do a conference presentation, let's say a local conference presentation wherever you're based uh, next week, you can use this material uh, to create uh, that presentation as well. Everything is given to you to be used any way you want. No permissions need to be asked from anybody. So feel free to use uh, everything as such. Now, uh, one other reminder, which I had in the monthly community call sitting tapings as well, so the provisioning.sharepointpmp.com is now in a public preview. So if you're looking into doing, for example, those conferences or doing uh, demos or doing uh, hands-on labs, but you need to have an, a cool-looking site, you can actually use the provisioning.sharepointpmp.com to do that. Um, so you can uh, actually go to this site, sign against your tenant, and as long as you're a tenant administrator, you can, we can provision you. Uh, an example content, example sites, example structures, even uh, additional settings like uh, customizations to those sites and all of that stuff. So really, really useful, uh, really useful tool for anybody to take advantage uh, in SharePoint Online or in Office 365 level. Now, just a uh, word of a kind of a future direction on this one. Uh, we will introduce, for example, Microsoft Teams templates and Microsoft Teams structures to be provisioned as part of these templates as well. So you can actually relatively easily then in future to set up, for example, demo environments, which have cool looking sites, but also they have a team structures and example content and all of that available for you. And then you can easily demo what's cool about Office 365. Now, uh, moving on on things, a uh, quick update on the on the growth of, and the adoption of SharePoint Framework. That still goes strong. Uh, we can see the direction going um, much higher than we we're expecting. So the growth curves are uh, still completely unpredictable. Um, the usage per user, we're now hitting 380% increase year over year uh, adoption of SharePoint Framework. And that's a massive number considering that it's uh, two and a half years or more than two years since the SharePoint Framework has been so the growth keeps on growing still. Uh, so it's not like just getting started. We've been now growing uh, massive numbers and triple digit, digit numbers uh, now for two years in a row, which is insane. So clearly the, clearly the development model is usable. Now on the on the roadmap, a few kind of a news which I kind of a touched if you were uh, in the dev, monthly dev call um, uh, on last Tuesday. We will have a 1.8.1 coming uh, quite soon. Um, maybe I'll, I'll say this out loud. We potentially it might come out later today which will address some of the, the issues in 1.8 related on on-premises scaffolding and a few other small uh, uh, issues which we had in 1.8. So certain small nuances which you might hit if you choose a certain path in the Yeoman generator. So 1.82 uh, is also coming out, and that's going to address more on the potential memory consumption uh, concerns or potential version conflicts related on uh, SPFX, Office UI Fabric, then React, and uh, underlying uh, uh, platform. So we will uh, keep on releasing additional versions as needed. Uh, 1.9, which is going to be, in quotes, the major version, next major version, is scheduled to go out in the May timeframe. Um, so right about SBC timeframe uh, would be probably the, the right timing for that. And we're looking to have general availability for the library component there, additional content extensions potentially there, additional SPFX extension points. Uh, CSP content security policy might be there in 1.9, or it might be delayed from there. Open sourcing your out-of-the-box Yeoman generator probably won't be in 1.9. Well, I can be 100% sure that it's not there, but it's, it's in the plans in the long term. And then we're looking into having the store story and everything else clarified uh, as soon as possible. So getting there one step at a time. But that's it from my side as a quick update on the SPFX side. Patrick? All right, taking over as presenter. So quick updates here on uh, the PNP offerings, PNP program offerings. Purple Rabbit, Visa, 
Come on, man. Uh, PMP JS Client Side Libraries. We released 132 April 5th. Um, that had some great increased graph coverage. Uh, Simon did a lot of work on that, or did most of the, all of the work on that. So very impressive uh, contributions there. Um, had some updates from some issues folks uh, reported uh, since the last release. <coughs> Excuse me, and then uh, a few fixes for some lingering uh, client side page issues uh, from when we did that large rewrite uh, a couple of releases ago. So I think we've got that mostly solid now. But of course, if you see trouble, uh, please do report it. Please let us know, and we'll work on getting that uh, fixed up. Um, lots of work behind the scenes on 2.0. I've talked about that uh, for a while now. Uh, the roadmap labels in the list. If you have ideas for 2.0, um, please post them and sort of tag it and say this is an idea for 2.0, um, and we'll get it labeled up uh, correctly. Um, but uh, welcome that feedback uh, as well, of course. Targeting a release of a beta around the time of Collab Summit. And uh, I wanted to uh, put out into this call, if anybody's interested in helping, uh, we've got a lot of work to do on 2.0. One of our big goals is to really reset uh, the documentation and the tests, which is uh, a lot of work, uh, but uh, I think going to be very rewarding for everybody at the end of it. So if you're interested in helping out with that, uh, every little bit helps, even if you have time just to write one uh, documentation page, that's a huge help. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, reach out, uh, or uh, we can create some help wanted issues uh, in the issues list. Uh, but either way, uh, let us know if you're interested in helping out with that. And I want to say again, thank you to everybody that contributes uh, on the PMPJS, uh, whether that's reporting issues, whether that's uh, submitting code. Uh, we appreciate all of that. So thank you very much. And I did um, want to mention... Um, so we recently crossed a milestone for PMPJS where we processed 3 billion requests uh, in the month of March uh, to SharePoint Online through the library. And that's across uh, every version of the library, but 3 billion. And so that's a big milestone and one uh, I'm very proud of. And I hope uh, all of you who have participated are very proud of that. Um, but I wanted to show this is a graph of the growth from when we first started measuring it in August 2016 uh, all the way through March. And you can kind of see um, things built up, and then they kind of settled. And then uh, just in the last six months, we've really been on, um, you know, December is always a down month, but the last six months have really been on a, a big climb, adding almost 300 million requests uh, month over month. So very cool. Um, and that is all thanks to all of you who are using this in your projects and demoing it in the community. And so I just wanted to say thank you, and I hope all of you can take a little bit of pride uh, from this growth uh, as well, because it's really been a community effort, and uh, it's it's very cool to see. And so hopefully, uh, you know, kind of cool for all of you to see the growth of what we've all worked on together uh, as well. Um, and I'm still waiting for my check for $1 per request, so any any time now. Uh, so updates on the Office 365 CLI. Upgrading SharePoint Framework. Uh, this is new version 1.15 uh, with commands for upgrading SharePoint Framework projects to 1.8. Uh, so that's the latest version of SharePoint Framework. You can update your old projects to the latest version, which is a very handy feature. Uh, managing Microsoft Teams apps and settings, removing lists and site columns, and then undeclaring records. As well, uh, in progress, more commands, of course. You can always install the latest version, npm install-g at pmp office 365-cli at next, and I'll get you the latest. You can follow the hashtag office 365cli on Twitter. There's a Gitter channel for asking questions, and there is a uh, docs link there at the bottom right corner, aka.ms slash 0365cli. So this is a very cool tool, a uh, very helpful cross-platform uh, to, to help manage uh, your SharePoint sites and is really great to integrate into you know test scripts or uh, you know set up scripts things like that uh, for your testing environment so a very cool tool um, definitely check that out if you have not now an update on the reusable components so these are two sets of components the first set is a set of uh, saying the word set a lot is a set of property controls that are used in the edit pane of your web parts and the uh, those 
uh, property controls and really help you have a rich editing experience uh, when you're editing your web parts. So you can have people pickers and taxonomy pickers, uh, things like that, uh, that are already styled for you with the Office UI fabric. And uh, it's really, um, it creates a nice interface for your users without a lot of work on your part. Similarly, you can use the React content controls, which are more for the body of your web part and for displaying data to your users. So great things like graphs, charts, maps, um, list displays, things like that. Uh, all reusable, all React. So they are React controls, but uh, easily drop into your project, save yourselves a lot of time and effort. And again, they are styled with the out-of-the-box uh, Office UI fabric, so you will get um, some some great styling with these controls uh, that should blend right into SharePoint and right into uh, your projects very easily. Two links down at the bottom. The first is to the property controls. The second is to the uh, body controls, the, the React controls. Um, so check those out. It's a great way to jumpstart your development uh, process uh, in SPFX, save you a lot of time, and build on the great uh, community effort that this has become with a lot of different uh, contributors and so forth uh, there. Um, Vardaman is telling me I've got the version wrong on the slide, so apologies for that. I guess it's uh, 116. We might not have gotten that updated, so uh, sorry about that. But the latest version will still be installable with the uh, npm command uh, we mentioned before. Do we have any SPFX control which can help in giving column level permissions? No such thing as column level permissions in SharePoint. Uh, so anything you do around that is going to be a hack. Yeah, Jim's saying the same thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, there isn't really going to be a way to do that um, uh, in SharePoint. <clears throat> now, finally, uh, before we get to the demos, updates on the Community Yeoman Generator. So this is a Yeoman Generator built on top of the out-of-the-box uh, SPFX Generator. So at the end of the day, you're going to get a real SPFX project with all the same underlying dependencies, pipelines, build process, Etc. And uh, the uh, I'm hoping the latest release is 170. Um, I believe that's right. Um, but that includes updates uh, to use the latest 18 generator for uh, SharePoint. It also includes updates to PNP JS um, and the various uh, reusable controls libraries, as well as includes the Office 365 CLI. Can folks hear me? I'm confused by the, uh... so some people can hear me and some people cannot hear me. Well, that's an awkward state to be in. So we're going to press forward, and unfortunately, uh, folks can't hear me. We will, uh, um, yeah, I'm not sure what the messages are y'all are getting. So we're going to press forward. We're going to record, keep recording the call, and uh, we will just move forward. Um, so, with the SPFX generator, um, we're going to select the TypeScript. <laughs> Whoever's trying to call me, please stop doing that. Um, so, in progress, we're going to select the TypeScript version for new projects, and we can as well have modularization of the gulp file injection. So, that's some of the uh, um, gulp file enhancements that are part of the uh, SPFX generator. So please do uh, check this out. This is also a great way to jumpstart your projects and save you some time, especially if you'd like to use some of the frameworks such as Vue or Angular uh, that aren't necessarily uh, supported, not supported, but aren't necessarily uh, set up for you automatically by the uh, standard SPFX generator. So a great way, again, to save yourself some time and some effort and get some great uh, tools already uh, installed and set up for you uh, we're gonna try and push forward wow. here. So Hugo. All right. So uh, I'll get the I'll get started. Hopefully, if uh, if I can just see someone confirm that you can hear me. Yeah. Great. Okay. So uh, my name is Hugo Bernier, and today, hopefully, I will be demoing my React Compare web part uh, with the file picker. Uh, I'm a really friendly guy, so if you have any questions or comments or concerns, uh, do not hesitate to contact me. My Twitter account is, is here, it's Bernie H, and my blog is tahoeninjas.blog. Uh, um, so I was just working on um, a control that I needed, I needed a control to be able to compare two images side by side. 
and I'm the world's laziest developer. So I, I, if I can avoid writing code, I will avoid. I will, I will look for things that I can reuse, things that are available out of the box, and uh, I, I can find anything uh, that I needed. So I, I actually looked at the uh, React um, Office Fabric UI, which had a um, control that allows you to compare things uh, side by side. Um, and they use this in their Fluent uh, site, you know, uh, Office Fabric is going to become uh, Microsoft UI Fabric, and eventually they're going to integrate uh, the Fluent style in their components, which will make the experience of uh, web applications look very, very close to or more in line with the uh, desktop applications. And what I needed was a control that I could use to compare things side by side, just like you can do here. Hopefully you can see I'm moving uh, the, a slider here, and I can see the before and after look. And I was I was um, looking everywhere, couldn't find a control, so I decided, you know what, I'll just build my own control. And as I was building the control, I thought, you know what, it would be really great if I could actually have a button on each side uh, that would allow users to um, select a file uh, from from the SharePoint file picker. So I looked everywhere uh, again for an out of the box uh, SharePoint file picker. I didn't find anything. I looked in the property controls, uh, the uh, the PNP reusable controls. Didn't find anything. I was just wrapping up doing uh, the rich text control for the uh, the PNP reusable control. Uh, I have a uh, demo of it uh, here. And maybe that's something I can demo at another time. But I decided, you know what, I'm going to write my own file picker. So I looked at the uh, file picker that's available in SharePoint. Uh, this is the image uh, web part that's available out of the box in SharePoint. And when you select uh, add image, it, what it actually does, it pops up this dialog that hopefully all of you have seen before, which shows uh, your recent files, allows you to search. Uh, allows you to pick files from a OneDrive, files from your site, allows you to upload uh, files and share from a link. So I decided, you know, I'm going to create this control. Um, and the goal was to create a control that would be easy to add to um, your, anyone's application that would uh, that would not require special permissions or anything like that. And I wanted the control to look as much as possible uh, exactly like the file picker control. So this is uh, this is the web part that I created. Uh, it's called the compare web part. Uh, and when you add it, it asks you to add um, images. If you click on uh, add images and click on choose image, this control here is actually uh, my custom control. So it allows me to look at my recent images. It allows me to search. It allows me to pick documents from OneDrive, and so on and so forth. So let me actually pick uh, documents uh, just to show. Um, so I'll go in my sample pictures here, and I'll pick a before image. And then I'll go to my other file picker, and I will pick an after image. Oops, after. And now what I should have is something that, well, it doesn't look very, uh, doesn't seem to be a, a good example here. But um, you can see that the idea here is I can pick images and put them side by side. Uh, so how did I do this? Uh, what I did is I actually went through the file picker that was available out of the box, and then I used the uh, the developer tools to actually start exploring what each component was. So I clicked on, you know, the uh, the navigation in the left, and I actually looked at, okay, well, it's got uh, the classes here. Um, for example, I was just using an example here. So I saw here there's this this class called MS Nav Group, and you know, as a general rule, anything that starts with MS Dash is probably coming from Microsoft. Um, so I actually figured, okay, so this is a Microsoft control, the MS-Nav group. 
I actually went to the uh, Office UI Fabric uh, repository. Uh, if, uh, if you haven't used that, it's actually a great uh, source to learn. It's actually github.officedev. And uh, under GitHub Office Dev, you have the Office UI Fabric React. And if once you're in there, you search for ms dash, uh, what did I say? ms dash nav group. So ms dash nav group. You find, yep, yeah, this class is actually used somewhere in the code. And uh, so I was able to actually find uh, the controls that were used uh, by going kind of one one component at a time. Uh, for example, I went to this here. I found that this is using something called an item tile. Uh, so I looked uh, and found item tile. Uh, it turns out, by the way, that in uh, the Office uh, UI fabric uh, item tile, you have kind of a something called an item tile and a tile list. Uh, those are controls that are in Office UI fabric. Unfortunately, they're still in the experiments package. So it's not quite supported yet. You're not quite supposed to use it in production. So uh, I had to actually rewrite uh, my version of those controls when I did that. Uh, but I basically I went through one control at a time and copied the styles, the look, and the feel, um, and uh, rebuilt this whole thing. The other thing that I did, uh, and uh, Anjani had a question in the in the uh, in the chat window here. How do? Uh, what's an example of getting the most recently used files? Well, if you look at the recent tab in the the file picker, you'll actually find that this is what it's doing. It's actually going to your, in this case, the most recently uh, used images. But if you look at your uh, network um, in your developer tools, and you actually monitor the traffic, uh, you'll notice that as you click you will actually see different calls being made. Now, there's tons of calls being made, um, you know, to, to uh, I don't know, some, it's probably some telemetrics or things like that. But eventually, you will find, and I'm not going to be able to, to find it in, in this presentation today, but you'll find the actual code that gets made when uh, SharePoint uh, does the search for a recent or a web search or something like that. So what I did is, if I open the code, because that's probably what you guys are here for, uh, is I went and I actually captured that network traffic, and then I went and I created uh, services. So if I go here under uh, services, I have a OneDrive service, uh, OneDrive service, and I actually recreated the call uh, to be able to to retrieve the information. So this is. You know, it almost feels hard coded. I feel bad about this, but this is the actual call that gets made uh, by uh, by the dialogue, and I just reproduce that. You'll notice here that I'm actually using, uh, in the case of going to my OneDrive, I'm using uh, SP Remote Web uh, to allow me to make uh, HTTP calls to another uh, URL. Uh, in, in this case, my OneDrive. Um, that's something that I was not able to do using the PNP uh, JS um, package. Um, I actually opened an issue with that to be able to add support for remote web uh, calls. Uh, so I had to actually hard code the, not hard code, but I had to create the, the fetch call myself without using PNP JS. But if you look um, quickly, and I'm trying. I'm really trying hard not to click around too much because I know it can get really hard to read. Uh, but if you look in my web part component, um, I have now a new property control called Property Pane File Picker, and it allows me to, you know, to uh, do things. For example, what type of images am I going to be expecting? When I built this control, I built it to support uh, both uh, images and documents. But I only tested it for images. That was my, my primary goal. And I have the ability to control whether I want to be able to do things like searching and things like that. Uh, behind the scene, the control is implemented as a bunch of tabs. Um, the one thing I want to make clear, when I built this, uh, you'll notice the out-of-the-box uh, picker has a few inconsistencies. 
Uh, it's it seems like, and it's probably Vesa and, and company can probably tell me whether that's the case or not. But it really feels like each tab was built by a different team, and as a result, there's there's minor discrepancies in the HTML behind the scene. Uh, for example, if you look at the site, you have document libraries. You don't have a way to change the views. But if you look at the OneDrive, you have the ability to change views, and you have uh, a file count inside the folders. Um, as tempting as it was for me to try to fix those discrepancies when I when I wrote this component, I made sure to to reproduce as much as possible the components exactly as they were, with the in inconsistencies, uh, with the uh, you know the little things that were kind of driving me nuts because I wanted everything to be perfect. Um, and that's something when you're looking at the code and you're you're looking at this and you're saying, well, why didn't Hugo optimize this by reusing this component or by reusing this class? That's why I did it this way. Um, and I've always been taught that uh, you know uh, optimization is enemy of the enemy of innovation. So my first focus was to make sure that I got this out there. There's going to be opportunities to improve this, hopefully, as we go further. Uh, so uh, for Anjani, for example, Anjani wanted to know how do I get the reset files tab. Uh, this is actually the call that uh, gets made. Um, I think that's the one recent files. Yeah, this is the call that gets made by uh, by SharePoint, which I converted to use PMP JS to do a search uh, based on last modified time and whatever the results that I receive, I actually display that in a, in a file picker type. Uh, um, I'm just being concerned about time here. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out, and I actually wrote this in the instructions to install this web part, uh, is the, the search component, the web search component, if I actually go show it to you for a second, uh, the web search, hold on. Uh, it allows you to search just like the out-of-the-box uh, component does. Um, this is actually using uh, the Bing API. And the Bing API needs an API key. So what I did is I actually configured the, this tab, first of all, so that you can disable it, but also uh, that you can, uh, you can um, go to the SPO set, storage entity set to set an API key at the tenant level. Um, and if you do that once uh, for your entire tenant, your entire tenant can use the shared API key. Uh, if you have any questions about how to do this, uh, you can uh, give me a shout on uh, Twitter, and I'll, I'll be able to show you that. Um, <clears throat> so as a result, I built this component. Again, it's inside of a web part. But uh, then what I did is I actually submitted a request, or not a request, an issue to the SP Dev Effects Property Controls, uh, saying, hey, anybody interested in this? It seems like I got a lot of comments. A lot of people are interested. So um, now that my rich text control is, is out, I will be converting the code from this web part to a reusable control. Um, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate uh, to reach out to me. Uh, I have written here the URL to the web part and a blog, po a blog post that explains the process I went through. And I'm sure I can count on David. Well, there he is, David Warner, to actually have the links there. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Hugo. Before we go forward, just a few practicalities. So HS and Joel, uh, if we want, we can reschedule or we can go longer today uh, because now we seem to be back on the on the track and now everything is getting recorded. But Hugo, um, well, actually, Joel, can you start sharing already? We'll have a chat with Hugo uh, on a few things. So first of all, you're absolutely correct. The individual tabs are being built by a different persons, uh, which is a pity, but it is what it is right now. Um, one thing what we are also looking into potentially do internally, uh, which might still take a while, is to get the whole system as a reusable component, which would, by the way, make sense. Um, but until that will happen, and I can't confirm will it happen at all, uh, having your tooling available will make a lot of sense. So really good stuff, uh, really, really great implementation. And, and it's kind of, how would I put it? It's always slightly scary when we do reverse engineering, but um, I would say, Hugo, thank you for doing this because this will help to justify also making the first party components potentially at some point open source or available 
right? So even though that would happen at some point, it's definitely not uh, worth of worth of uh, investments and the work that you've done. So super, super useful. And also the APIs um, which we're using and which are using behind of the scenes, we need to get them documented. So absolutely makes sense. But thank you, Hugo. Thank you. Awesome stuff. Absolutely awesome stuff. Um, now let's actually, I think we're on Joel's, Joel's table, on Joel's screen, unless I'm mistaken. Can you hear me? Yes, we can see your screen. Uh, so let's do your demo and then HS can uh, decide if he wants to do the demo today still or if we do we want to reschedule um, and um, everything is getting now recorded at least. So that's a good sign. Yeah, thank you. I'll try to do it quickly. And, so my and name is Joel Sorry, Rodrigo. sorry, sorry, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, just jumping still on Hugo's. <laughs> sorry for started late. So don't worry about it, Hugo. <laughs> I think it wasn't your fault that you started late. So that's definitely on us. So thank you, Joel. Just take it away. Yeah, that's fine, Hugo. Your demo was really cool. So my name is Joel Rodrigues. I'm a developer at CPS, a UK-based company. And um, you have my, I think you can see on that screen, um, my Twitter handle and my blog. So let me get this out of the way. And uh, I need to move everything into that screen. Can you see? Yep, we can see SharePoint. My workbench? OK. Yep. So let me just make sure this is running. Yeah, look, all this is running. So the web part that I have here is basically to Confirm again how easy it is to show the Microsoft uh, MS Graph client that we can use in SPFX since 1.6. Uh, and it's just a simple demo that retrieves the teams that the user is a member of, and then the user can switch on and off the option to open on client um, on the client app instead of the um, browser. Let, I'm just having some technical issues because. The presenting is getting on the way. I can switch those. There you go. So as I mentioned, the web part only has a property here. So by default, oops, if I click here and I can't see. If you if you unpin the, yes, exactly. That, that should get that one away. Cool. No, it doesn't go away. Patience. OK. Come on. Ah, there you go. Ah, I can't get my mouse closed. OK, let me move this below a bit. Um, so if I click, uh, so the, the web part doesn't have a new UI because for the sample, I don't thought, I didn't thought that was relevant. Uh, so it's just rendering a list of links. You click on one, and he opens by default the general channel for that theme. So you can see here you are on demo to general or demo tree general. Come on. Yeah. So if I then switch this to enable that, and I click on demo one, for example, I can have this pop up, and I want to open on the app. And there is an issue at the moment, and I can guarantee you this was working before. Sometimes. I was trying this before the call. It seems like not always switches to the correct channel at the moment in the client app. I will try to have a look on that and fix any potential issues if there, there, there is one. Um, but that's basically it. Um, this is done by generating different URLs when you enable this option. Um, so in, in theory, if I had go to Team 4, you should, after a slight delay, see the switch for the channel 4, the general, the general channel of the Team 4, which is not happening. And I had no time before the call to really find out why. Uh, so if I jump into the code, uh, the web part is quite simple. Um, so on the web part, you can see that mainly all you need is importing the graph client and initializing it. Um, so I'm doing the initializing here on the init method of the web part. 
and after that I just pass it to a uh, team service which does the calls you could potentially avoid these where the man published a really nice blog post about that um, so you could potentially avoid having to pass um, the client to the service like that and make it more uh, have completely separation between the service and the web part um, after that, I, on the web part itself, I only have a switch property, which you saw, and I basically render my React component in here. Um, there is a load function, which uh, happens on the client mount and component mount and component update uh, when the property is switched, and it basically retrieves the themes for the user which we can go there and if we basically call the service which oops, uh, on the my teams is as simple as that uh, notice I don't have any selects for properties that's probably something you want to add for production code even though the properties for um, the teams are very limited but still if in the future uh, the, the graph team decides to add a whole bunch of information there. You probably don't want to retrieve all that. Uh, and we have a similar method for the channels. Uh, in this case, we pass the team ID, which is required for the call. And again, I don't have any select here, which uh, you should add for production code. Uh, if you look at the sample in GitHub, I created a pull request before the call. Well, actually, probably during the call where I removed um, another method that I had here to get the tenant ID, which I was using to open in the client app. Uh, I found out I don't need that. So the way this works is um, when you click on one of these links, oops, I'm going to do the request and get the channels for that um, team just to prevent if so if you have a large number of teams you don't want to do all those requests in advance uh, so if the user um, clicks there you get the channels for that team in this case for the sample I'm just getting the first channel which is the general one and I redirect the user to that channel if the property to open in client is enabled the channel contains the web URL property, which actually has the URL you need for that. And to show you how the URL looks like, if you click on one of these and open in Teams, if you then go to one of these channels and click get link to channel, that's the, sh the link you get on that property. And it's the one I'm using to redirect the user to the correct channel, which funny enough is not working at the moment. <laughs> um, so that's when another difference from the current version in the dev branch of the samples. So whenever the pull request is accepted, you will get those updates, but you can see on the pull request the changes I did. Um, the other option, if opening client app is switched off, but which is by default, uses a different URL to open on the web browser. Um, to, to be able to retrieve this information, we need permissions to access Graph, um, which I declared on the web part. So, so you may wonder if you haven't used this before, so how do I know where to get this from? A very simple place to look for is on the graph documentation. So if you go to, oops, wrong link, um, talksmicrosoft.com and then go to graph, you have a view and reference here at the bottom, which I have open here. In here, you have basically a nav left navigation, which is awesome and lets you ex go down the levels of the elements you want to or basically the endpoints you want to use. In this case, if we go, for example, to channel and I want to list channels, it tells you straight away what permissions you need. 
uh, this time for a team to retrieve my teams. It's as simple as this. Just look for the action you need or the data you need. And basically, you can see here the permissions you need. So in this case, I need user read all, user write all. And we need, you, we need the same, but for a group to retrieve the channels. Yeah. So that's what I have in my web part. If you want to test the web part before, basically, when you're doing development and you don't want to install it, but you want to run it on Workbench, you can use the Office um, 365 CLI. I have the commands here. It's extremely, extremely simple to add the permissions in advance. Uh, you don't need to deploy the app, and it, it's just awesome. When you you deploy the app, or when you enable the permissions, you on the admin portal, you can go to app API management, and you can see the API requests approved here. So when you do it through the CLI, they get automatically approved. When you do it through the app, and I'm going to show you now, I just package the app in advance. If I add it to the app catalog, you can see on the app that you have the permissions you need here. And you should see, yeah, there you go. So we have the same duplication here. So if, when you use this page, you will wish it had a bit more functionality, things like reject multiple requests in, in parallel. Um, one important thing is when you go here and you try to approve it, this this permission does, is not specific to your solution. It applies to anyone, any solution on the tenant or any script that runs on your page. As soon as you enable, basically you open the door, anyone can use it. Uh, so there's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, hopefully, my personal point of view is I wish this would change in the future, and, but let's see how things go. Um, just one important thing to keep in mind, and um, if you work, for example, with clients, make sure you always make this very clear to them, because if they find out later and uh, they were not aware when they enabled permissions, they may go a little bit crazy. Um, so be fully transparent in that this scenario. Um, so you have other issues if you try to approve. You will, so basically, anything that was approved, it will fail. Uh, there is a few scripts I've seen online to clean up duplicated requests. You may want to have a look at that. So, Joel, um, Joel just to, uh, yeah. I think I think we can go through the, the basics. Just a few, few comments on that one. For, first of all, on the on the permissions, uh, if you would use the isolated web parts, um, then you are able to target the permissions to a specific application. So, isolated web parts are actually in GA starting from 1.8, uh, so a few weeks back. So, that will actually then grant you and give you the capability of not doing organization-wide permissions, but also a, a solution-specific permissions. Now, uh, um, and then the, the UI things uh, are pretty horrible. We are aware of them. Uh, they should be getting cleaned up for 1.9 release. So we're fixing and, and making uh, giving some love in, in, in quotes uh, for this page uh, for the next releases as well. So because there are uh, pending. The fact that you can actually have multiple times the same permission here is really annoying. So. Yeah, thanks for the isolated permissions. I clearly missed that. No yes, worries. No worries. Um, now, from a timing perspective, we're slightly up, uh, over time. So, Joel, sorry for jumping on here. Just take uh, from a consistent uh, or taking, making sure that we manage the time efficiently. Uh, HS, uh, are you still available for doing the demo, or Joel, did you have anything to still add here? Just double checking. I think uh, no, no, I'm done. Seven. Okay, cool. So, HS. Uh, yes. Fine for doing still the demo today, and we'll get it recorded and in the YouTube channel and all of that. Or do we? Do you want to reschedule? We most likely some um, people need to. Uh, I mean, if it, if we have a time, I, I'm happy to wrap up in five minutes. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let's let's not do too much rushing because I think whatever you have is actually really cool as well. But kind of pinpointing the key scenarios, we will go now slightly over time uh, due to technical issues which we're having in start and then on the middle. That was a pretty catastrophic <laughs> uh, <laughs> failure on the on Skype. But HS, if you can share your screen and let's see if we get things moving. And thank you, Joel. Okay. A really good demo. Uh, before HS actually starts, so on Joel's uh, thing, it's not a massively complex web part, but I, I think those simple web parts are super useful to understand the basic scenarios because then you can actually go to the solution and sample and see, okay, now I get it, and then I'll decorate that and make it pretty more prettier if needed. But it, it's really a kind of a classic scenario where we want to use Microsoft Graph, we want to get access on the, in this case, the Microsoft Teams data through the, per, the me Graph endpoint, and then rendering that and combining the SharePoint and Teams experience. So super valuable stuff as well. But HS, um, and please take it away. All right, thank you. Um... Hi guys, my name is Ijaz Hussain and I uh, hope you all can see my screen. Um, here is my Twitter handle and blog and there's also a link for uh, that sample available under uh, SPDF uh, FX web parts uh, wrapper on GitHub. And so, um, so let me go to actually show you how the web part looks like and then we can talk from there. Okay, so um, so this is how uh, the web part actually look like, and um, so there's a couple of things basically in in this web part. Um, this is not really complex, but it's like a couple of different uh, uh, components uh, add together uh, so make it more functional. Uh, so if we have in this web part we have uh, a um, SPFX React reusable control uh, for taxonomy picker. And we have uh, another search box which you use for a type search. And uh, so this is a, a, a list of images coming from the image library. Uh, and uh, another component we have in here is uh, we have implemented uh, server side um, pagination. And also, uh, so uh, so just to give you first of all, show you the demo, uh, and then we can look into the quickly code as well. So if I go into uh, the property pane, so you can simply give a name of the um, a library, uh, uh, which is um, I have here open is the image library, and uh, I have added a few sample images, and then uh, for uh, for text me picker, I have added a one text um, uh, tons which you can tag uh, with let's call the department, and. Uh, for for the search uh, for type search, I'm I'm pointing to the title of uh, uh, the the images. So so you can give the name of the gallery here and also um, select the size of your uh, um, number of items you want to display on the page. And uh, once you say so you can apply, and so we have uh, this. Uh, 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 Kind of first loaded, so I'm going to just quickly reload this one. So we have a fresh. Uh, okay, so so first, so if I can I can quickly go to next and is um, and you know go through all. So I've got total 11 items in in the list. So you know so you can go nice uh, pagination, use the pagination, and then if I click on any of the images and. Um, Yeah, so we have, uh, I've used uh, uh, um, uh, Office Fabric UI uh, panel component, so it will take, it will basically uh, take that image you clicked and also will display a list of uh, all the tagging which are associated with that image. Uh, so, um, so potentially uh, this can be used uh, not just for images, you can use the same web part for uh, uh, documents as well. So in terms of the um, filtering, if I, let's say I have a um, department called uh, sales, so if I can, this. So yeah, so it's basically pull up all the sales uh, uh, related images and uh, the same thing goes. And when I cancel this one and it's gonna go back to reset uh, automatically. And uh, if I wanna start typing anything, let's press B, start with the boat. So it's gonna, so it's basically, uh, 
uh, you know, use the type search and match the title of the images and bring back those images. So you can search that shop, looking for shop, it will basically bring that. Bring that. So that, that, that's a, a demo of, for, for, um, for the web part. And if we quickly look in thing, um, so I can, I can go back to, uh, yeah, so basically, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for a couple of, uh, my properties like list name. I want to make sure I have, uh, the page size as uh, so once I've got these, I'm, I'm going to my main, uh, uh web part, which is image gallery. Uh, so th there are a couple of things here, uh, which I can quickly show you. Um, right. So, uh, because I'm, uh, I'm building the pagination, uh, uh, myself. And uh, so I need to uh, need to kind of a uh, keep a record of how many items I've loaded before, and then construct the REST API URL accordingly. So that's why I'm using URL collection and filter query, span query, and select query. Um, so if I show you uh, the initial, so I've got method one method which is read item. Uh, is basically. Um, Yeah, so with, with, with the read, this, this method, I'm simply calling my, uh, uh, this, this SP service I'm using, which is basically I'm passing this URL and, uh, uh, let me go open the, um, grid mount. Okay, there you go. So the first time when it loads, it basically, uh, it's making two requests. First of all, I want to know how many items I have in the list. So I get the list, total list count and then uh, I'm building the query based on the list item count, and then once I've got the total list item, I'm making actually putting that URL in the URL collection, and then reading the uh, 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 making a REST API call. And based on that, I'm basically so if I show you my service list service, uh, if be quick one, so I'm checking uh, my all data dot next link. So I'm keeping a note of because I need to maintain this one for a, a, a previous state and the next state of the, my uh, pagination. So I'm basically also when I make a request, I'm also checking for this auditor dot next link. And uh, and based on that, because I'm keeping uh, put into the collection, and when I click on the next and the previous button, I basically uh, subtract and add these and update the statuses and the, uh, accordingly. So, um, so quick one. Uh, so you would have you can. So I have a method where on click next, on click previous, and then I have a filtering on text uh, text me picker change, and I search change, which basically uh, get the query and po uh, call this uh, method in their list service and bring the data and then uh, show you in the web part. I think that's 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 all from my side. Cool, really cool stuff. Uh, I think uh, that would be really nice to have a kind of a generic service um, because th this this makes a lot of sense. Actually, there's there's a lot of cool stuff related on loading the URLs and loading the data and then filtering the data. But awesome example. Uh, the uh, you had a blog post on that one. Thank you, David, for sharing the links and the blog post and also the the sample. Really, really useful. Uh, sample of showing how to make this basic, uh, well, not just basic stuff work, but this kind of a filtering to work as well. So really, really cool stuff. Now, um, I think uh, it is time to go back on the slides. Awesome stuff, HS, um, on that one. Absolutely. Uh, I'm going to move back on the slides. I'm not sure if Patrick's connection uh, is, is it back? Are you back from the Skype Nado. I have returned. <laughs> okay, so we are only 13 minutes uh, over the time. So Let's stretch it out. Stretch it out. <laughs> do we want to have any Q&A? <laughs> Let's do Q&A. Let's get to the Q&A slide. We're going to do it today. Uh, let's see if I can actually move to the slides. Uh, so let's actually go there. But um, thank you, Hugo. Thank you, Joel. And thank you, HS. Uh, really, really, really 
uh, great demos today. It's a pity that we had some technical issues. I think we were able to save the recording of the demos, which is super important so people can actually see what you built and also having that discussion recorded into, into YouTube as an individual uh, video. Um, now we're and down thank to... you to everybody for trying to hang with us through all that. That's <laughs> uh, the biggest cascading Skype failure I've ever seen. So <laughs> indeed, Skype good Nado. times. Skype Nado. <laughs> Skype Nado. <laughs> yes, it's like a shark Shark Nado. Exactly, exactly. Skype Nado. <laughs> A tornado full of Skypes? Uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> that's even more horrifying than a, than, than a Sharknado. Skypocalypse? That's a good one, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so our next meeting is going to be April 25th. That's two Thursdays from now. The next general dev, dev special interest group meeting will be next Thursday, April 18th. Uh, thank you all very much. We really appreciate you sticking with us. Um, this call will be probably our most edited ever, and uh, we'll have it out probably the next 24 to 48 hours. Thank you all very much. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.